The Richest Man Who Ever Lived by Greg Steinmetz. First of all, before I introduce the premise of this book like I usually do, do you know the answer to that question? Who is the richest man who ever lived? I looked at a picture of him, I heard his name, and I, it, he did not sound familiar at all, which I was shocked. Like, you'd think, this is the richest man who has ever lived. At one point, he owned 2% of the GDP of Europe, and I haven't heard of him. That was mind-boggling to me. Uh, and I went through the whole novel thinking, why haven't I heard of this guy before? His name is Jacob Fugger, and he lived from 1459 to 1525. So the best way I can summarize this book is, imagine what would happen if J.D. Rockefeller were born in the medieval era. That's exactly what this life seemed to be like, which is just so interesting. Jacob Fugger was a capitalist, and in a weird way, listening to his life story, it just sounds like the American dream. He and his, his family found that they were good at something and then they, they capitalized on it and they made a whole, whole lot of money by doing, making deals with emperors and leaders in Europe and just being amazing business people, coming up with accounting systems that were efficient, that minimized losses. Really, a lot of our modern notions of business started back in its infancy in, in these days. So it's cool to, to read a book where you're watching these things play out where all of these common sense business ideas are completely foreign. Speaking of the world that he was born into, you have to understand the world to understand why this guy was so unique. Classically, there's something called the great chain of being where you have man as at the center and you have different levels of being. You have animals below man, you have plants below animals, and you have rocks, dirt, inanimate objects at the very bottom. And above man, you have angels, and above angels, you have God. So the idea with this great chain of being is each of the levels have characteristics above and below, and so their existence is uh, an equilibrium between the two. In the medieval times, they further subdivide the human race. So you have peasants, serfs, all those people at the bottom, and you have kings at the top. So this is the great order of existence. Everyone's life revolved around this, and that's just the way things were. And then Jacob Fugger comes along, and he's talking to kings, and he doesn't see the relationship as a subject king so much as he does a debtor and a debt collector. He writes very bold letters to these rulers that he lent money to, saying, you owed me money, and now I expect to get it. And the rulers at the time know where their bread is buttered, that Fugger is financing the wars. They know that their economy is linked to whether they're in the good graces of Fugger. It's a fascinating thing to watch a very savvy business person have power even over the people who were the, the, uh, at the top of everything in the medieval world. The story is really engaging. This should definitely be a Hollywood movie and I, I would love to see it. The question I had while reading this book is whether I admired Jacob Fugger. Because he is a cutthroat business person and he just sees that as part of the game that he's playing. That he's, and he's playing to win and get as much money as he possibly can. He is a man who would make Ayn Rand very proud. He is an Ayn Rand hero well before John Galt or any of her other heroes made it to the page. I have to say, overall, of course I admire him, because it seems that the alternative is embracing the great chain of being nonsense that they had uh, back in the Dark Ages. So I think it's great that there was this capitalist that's shining light on an otherwise darkened world. The book does a good job of going through his life and all the people that he's dealing with and all of the times where he was almost ruined but made just the, the right decisions and uh, he was saved with huge, huge payoffs. It's fascinating too because he lives in a time where if he goes under, he's going to prison. It's not like he has some kind of safety net where if he loses all his money, he gets, still gets to keep his house. He's all in. I think that's what, what drove him a lot. That being said, I would give this book an easy four stars. If you have any recommendations, leave them in the comments below.